but um, so basically what this board is doing or how they're investing is not necessarily philanthropical but they're investing in things that are important to them so they might invest in a, a company that's up and coming that's values uh, recycling and has found a new way to recycle plastic and this family is really important or puts a lot of emphasis on the environment or they might uh, found or support a, a women's group that you know does the X, Y, or Z. So they're going to figure out what their family values are, which aren't very clearly spelled out in the case, whatever they may be as a family, and that's how they will direct their investment. So yes, it's not directly philanthropy, but it's uh, in, in power investing? Mm -hmm. in power yeah, if you go to the granular level, will James buy this kind of thing? I will, will, he, will he go with the, what the power of the office, family office can do? I think that at the very least, he's going to go along with it because that just seems like the kind of guy he is. Okay. What's going to when, when, What about Leslie's son who wants to take over the company? How do you compensate and appease his desire? Is it a son? Is yeah. It a daughter? There's opportunity for growth within the family office. There are leadership uh, positions within a family office. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the family office structure, but they do have similar things like an investment manager, like a CFO, like a CEO. They operate sort of just like a consolidated wealth group. And so if uh, that individual was focused towards investment, if that person was more on the human side, there, uh, there are different uh, things within a family office that that person could potentially do, as well as other family members. If you know you have a G3 member who current or currently isn't involved in the business, who's saying, oh, actually, that sounds really interesting to me. I'd love to work with the board and do this. That's one of the great things about family offices, is that it really um, offers up a space for there to be new opportunities for the family um, to get along not only as a business, but to get along uh, interpersonally and to create jobs within the family. How do you resolve the, um, and, and it, I may have missed it, but I also want to apply it to future generations. How do you resolve the situation we got into here with the um, G2 having the power to decide but no value, G3 having value to but only being allowed to act and pass upon decisions, and then where G4 and G5 ultimately will end up. Because how do you set that up for all of them having some, say, maybe at proportionate levels and some value yeah. at proportionate levels? Do you? Currently it's egalitarian, um, but people who sit on the board, it does rotate between the generations, um, at least for G3. So I think that sort of gives a stake as for, well, this branch has more power than we do because there's more people involved. That wouldn't be the case because they do have this rotating basis. They're not saying, oh, well, Cousin Jim has been on the board for five years and that's not fair. And then when you get to G4, well, you know. So I think in theory, if they wanted to, they could expand with each generation to have a generational representative, which I think is a very important idea to say, we're giving these people voice. Obviously, there would have to be age cutoffs, there would have to be certain responsibility requirements. What about equity then? Okay, that's power, but what about the equity part of it? Well, currently, again, it's egalitarian. Everyone going in, they're all putting their shares in. They would all get equal shares with the future ability to, after this probation period of them starting to gain wealth, um, be able to buy out and check out. Just to clarify, I'm not sure if we spoke this uh, completely enough, but all of the members of G3 are currently equal owners in the business, regardless of whether they're involved in the business or not. Mm -hmm. So basically this whole model of like non-equity voting kind of dies out when we create this board. Mm -hmm. um, so the equity stays where it is and would in theory be passed on through those branches of the family that are created in subsequent generations. So that's sort of how we're sort of killing off this old model of weighted one way on decision making and weighted another way on equity and the consequences of that decision. Is it in terms of inheritance or is it, I'm sorry, is no, it in terms ahead. of inheritance? So like if you're a lineage of G3, G3's lineage splits down to two people, 50% each, yeah. 100% here. Yeah, that would be. So it'll keep getting smaller and smaller down the correct. line. Okay. There is dilution. Okay, that was my quite. That was my next question. As you recast the equity structure, how, what's the flow? Yeah, there's there's definitely going to be dilution down through the generations. What about married spousals and stuff like that? that is there a consideration for that? Um, so sort of the precedent that's been set before that Leslie's husband, 
who was CFO before was involved in the business and could work in it, but again, did not cross into that O circle, was not an owner. So it's very much a blood's thicker than water or ink on a contract or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very much going to be the genetic descendants has what's been demonstrated before. That's not to say that this board, which is discussing values, couldn't change that down the line. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of why we're putting this in place because right now their values look pretty static, kind of just, yeah, we want money. We're <laughs> rich kids. We want more money. And having that in place means that as these generations grow and change, because people grow and change over time, hopefully, um, that they could change their values in response to that and the implementation of those values in this investing company that they're starting. And what you often see is that uh, in a small generation, G2, G3, where you have three members and seven members, uh, that is less of a problem. When you start getting to G8, G9, G10, where you have hundreds of members, that's I think when it becomes a real issue, but they certainly have the adaptability to deal with that in the future when stepkids, divorcees, etc., etc., become an issue. Currently it's not, but because they do have a board that's sort of stipulating their values, making these decisions, they can certainly change to that if they want to. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Kelly? No? Good. Slide. Uh, are they doing this again, or are we only doing it one time? One time. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, let's uh, let's talk about how you did. You don't want to. I'm going to record this for Joe as well, just so he can see it all. All right. I don't want to sit directly in front of the camera. Just kidding. I do. You do. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you hot, Mark? A little bit. I was also. It's not a show if I'm not stealing it. Um, your use of the pathways model was your best yet. Um, it was really well implemented. It was easy to understand it. Um, I would like to see you define it a bit more uh, as you roll it out as to what it means. So make less assumption as to what people know. Yeah, they're not, gonna, they're not going to know what those buckets are. You know, stewarding the family, stewarding the enterprise. You know, Nurturing family. Yeah, I thing. thought of that. Well, we don't have to. Yeah, um, yeah slight slime, right? Three circles, we don't have to, right? That's like common. That is pretty common, and um, th it, that brings me to a something that you consistently did, which was owner. This is an ownership first family. That helped tremendously, especially when you got to the recommendation of we want the cash. You know? Can I just ask real quickly, were you familiar with the three systems model? Only me, because I met with him about five minutes ago. Okay, so I, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's give it this little thing. Okay. Because <laughs> you're on the, the board. You're on the whiteboard, yeah. <laughs> there was a mini session. I, I, I got it all in one hour. We just started yeah. using all these terms, and it's like we should, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you, several presentations back, um, when we met in the classroom over there, and you used the three pathways, you clearly defined it very, very well. Can you well. put three pathways up there for me? Is that possible? I'd like to, because I have questions. I mean, I have comments about the PowerPoint, but that's just my thing. But the pathways. The pathways. Oh. pathways. It's nice. it was, yeah. okay. Or my part of it. No, we're fine right there. I just want to see what you're talking about when you're talking about it. Yeah. These are three, um, there's some recent research that uh, was done. It came out in September. Um, and they said there's three different areas to for long-term sustainable generational transfer of wealth within a family enterprise. And first, you have to nurture the family. You have to create communications, cohesion. And then second, you need to actually steward the enterprise. You need to have sustainable growth, uh, decent policies and procedures in place, ownership guidelines, uh, employment policies, things that nurture the professionalization of the business. And then third is engaging the next generation to be responsible, smart, savvy, well-developed individuals so that either as owners or and as family members and as potential employees, they know what the heck they're doing. You can't do all three of these, you have to do one or the other? Is that No, what? all three work all together. Why is there no family council in the middle of the second one? Isn't that? Yeah, this is talking about what they're doing currently. Right now. Oh, this is what again. they're currently doing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, we for her, for her. were they currently having family meetings? Yes. yes. So but it wasn't effective. They weren't productive. They, they were not right. conflicts right. were starting That's to occur. That's kind of what I was saying, that there's conflicts. They are having these family meetings, but there's conflicts 
going on, but they're not talking about them in the family meetings. The family meetings are just kind of. Do most people get that type of stuff when you put that up there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, is the FX okay? I never know. Yeah. In my industry, it stands for father. We. Use